When I woke up, I realized that nobody was around. The car was gone. My girls were gone. It was just this dark, dark road. The year is 1993. Dorothy Lewis was a 34-year-old mother living in Eustis, Florida. She was also an active member in her local church. She had two daughters, three-year-old Jasmine and seven-year-old Jamilia. Her husband and daughter's father, James Arthur Lewis, tragically passed away from meningitis on Christmas Day of 1989, just three years prior. Now a widow, she took sole care of her two daughters and had the support of her family. Seven-year-old Jamilia was enrolled as a first grader and an honor roll student at Eustis Heights Elementary School. She was described as prissy, girly, and detail-oriented when it came to fashion and dressing up, while three-year-old Jasmine was more of the tomboy. On a Saturday night, Dorothy had been planning on attending church the following day, where they were all asked to bring a covered dish. Dorothy wanted to make her favorite dessert, the strawberry pretzel salad, but needed a few ingredients. She brought her daughters along with her to stop by their local Winn-Dixie shop to buy the rest of the ingredients. When she arrived, she saw two guys sitting on the bench outside, but paid no mind and continued inside. What she didn't realize was that those guys were trouble. Around 10 p.m., just before Dorothy arrived, another woman named Lynette Cheetah went into the store and saw those same guys sitting on the bench outside. Once she left, one of them walked ahead of her and the other behind her as she was approaching her car, and then the one ahead of her went to the end of the bumper, turned around, and then stood. She quickly got into her car, locked her doors, and sped off, and as she drove, she saw the two guys walk back to the store. When Dorothy Lewis bought her ingredients, she left the store and headed towards her car. But as she put her daughters in the car, she noticed one of the guys coming towards her, and as she looked at him, he pulled up his shirt to reveal a gun in his waistband. He told her, get in the car and nobody will get hurt, before calling out to his older friend saying, this is the one, let's go. Given that Dorothy already locked her daughters in the car, she did not want to leave them and escape, so she complied. The girls began crying in fear, and the younger guy told Miss Lewis to shut the girls up. The older guy drove her car while the younger one stayed in the passenger seat with Dorothy and her three daughters in the back seat. As they drove, Dorothy called to Jesus, and when they overheard, the older guy said, This ain't Jesus, this is Satan. At some point during the drive, Dorothy came up with a plan to escape the car whenever it hits a stop. As she sat in between both of her girls, she told the oldest to jump when she said jump. As the car reached an intersection and the car slowed, Dorothy tried to grab for the handle, but her hand slipped, and the sound of the handle alerted the younger guy in the passenger who shouted, get your hands off of the door. Doing stuff like that will get you hurt. After about 15 minutes, they pulled into an isolated hick stitch road, and the older guy pulled Dorothy out, leaned her on the trunk of the car, and sexually assaulted her. She begged them not to in front of her daughters watching, but he did not care. She tried to reach for the gun, but the younger guy caught her and said, you're not gonna get the gun, B. The younger guy then told him to hurry up and proceeded to rape Dorothy afterwards. After they finished, the older guy told her to sit down. She told him, I thought you said if I did what you said, nobody would get hurt. So she refused to sit down. Then he shot her in the leg. Afterward, he points the gun onto the middle of her forehead and she starts swatting her arms and fighting back to get the gun away from her, but then everything goes dark. Hours later, Dorothy woke up in a dazed and confused state. The car with her daughters was gone, so she started walking down the road looking for help, and every time she heard a car approaching, she would hide in the bushes thinking that they were coming back for her. Eventually, she reached a home with her lights on. She knocked on the door and told the man on the other side who answered her name and what had happened to her and to call the police. The man never opened the door, 
but called for help as she sat behind a bush. Eventually, the police arrived and rushed her to the hospital. Dorothy endured and miraculously survived three additional shots aside from the one in her leg, one in the middle of her forehead between her eyes that tore into her skull, one in her mouth that shattered her teeth and ripped a hole in her tongue, and one that grazed her neck. She underwent brain surgery where a doctor patched the hole in her skull with four metal plates and 26 screws, and a dentist rebuilt her teeth in the following years. Dorothy is now blind in one eye and has lost all sense of smell and taste. However, once she woke in the hospital, her immediate question to her sister Margaret, who was by her side, was, Is this a dream? Her sister replied, No. Dorothy's next question was, Did my babies make it? And her sister replied, No. Dorothy Lewis's body then went numb. Once both of the guys shot Dorothy Lewis, they moved her body to the side of the road and continued to drive off with her two daughters, Jamelia and Jasmine. As they drove off, the girls continued crying and pleading, saying, I want my mommy and mommy multiple times. Shortly after, the older guy stopped the car and ordered the girls to get out. They lifted three-year-old Jasmine out and seven-year-old Jamelia got out on her own. They took the girls into a grassy area along the roadside, sat the girls down, and killed them both with a single bullet. Jasmine was shot above her left eye, and Jamelia was shot in the top of her head. The guys then tossed their bodies over a nearby fence before leaving. Autopsies of their bodies found they were shot at very close range, and the gunpowder in Jasmine's eye indicated that they were alive while shot. Eventually, the guys returned to their homes and bragged about the crime to their friends. At some point, the guys found out that Dorothy Lewis was still alive after the police were rewarding any informant with $1,000. Just the day after the murders, the older guy involved went into the police station to say that he knew information about what had happened to Dorothy and pinned the happenings on the younger guy and one of his friends. As he's telling the police information, they noticed a blood stain on his socks and shoes. And when confronted, he replied, How do you know that ain't no ketchup stain? The older guy, 19 year old Richard Henyard, eventually admitted after hours that he helped abduct Dorothy and her girls, raped and shot her, and was present when the girls were killed, but denied that he ever killed the girls. Richard Henyard did not have the best life growing up. He was born on June 26, 1974, to a mother that had him very young and suffered from alcoholism and drug abuse. As a baby, Henyard suffered from a severe milk allergy, which his mother had trouble dealing with, which resulted in sores all over his little body. His father was detached and rarely around. His godmother took him when he was 10 months old and kept him until he was three. Between the ages of 3 and 11, he was living between his mother and godmother's houses. Once his godmother became sick of his behavior, she took him to live with his father. Henyard's father, Richard Henyard Sr., worked every day for 90 hours a week and had no time to be involved in young Richard's life. There was a time where Henyard stayed in a school's office for weeks because his father wouldn't come to register him. In his adolescence, Henyard was involved in a juvenile robbery in 1989, even though he was a lookout for another teen who committed the robbery before committing this horrifying crime. Once he implicated his younger accomplice, they brought him into custody. His younger accomplice was 14-year-old Alfonso Smalls. Alfonso Smalls was born sometime in 1979 to his mother Annette Smalls. Not much information is available on him, but his mother stated that he has always been a great kid up until he met Richard Henyard. She said he used to innocently aggravate his sisters at best, but Alfonso never caused any trouble even close to the magnitude of this crime while growing up. They brought Alfonso Smalls into custody and after searching his home, they found the gun that was used to shoot Dorothy and her daughters. 
Henyard had both Jamilia and Jasmine's blood on his sock and jacket. Smalls had blood spatter present on his trousers consistent with dragging a body. Both of their fingerprints were found on the gun and both blamed each other for shooting Jamilia and Jasmine. It is still not certain if just one of them was responsible. 19-year-old Richard Henyard was convicted of armed kidnapping, sexual battery, attempted first-degree murder, robbery with a firearm, and two counts of first-degree murder. He was found guilty and sentenced to death. Since 14-year-old Alfonso Smalls was underage, he could not be sentenced to death. Instead, he received life in prison without parole or eight consecutive life sentences. His mother, Annette, believes the verdict to be too cruel and still advocates for the release of her only son while also acknowledging his part in the crime. However, she believes her son when he said he did not kill the girls. Dorothy actually did not want Henyard to be executed. She stated, it won't bring back my girls. She remarked that she'd be no better than him if she demanded he be executed. Richard Henyard ate his last meal, which consisted of two fried chicken breasts, a turkey sausage, fried rice, chocolate chip cookies, and a can of Coke, and was executed on September 23, 2008, at age 34. He died while standing on him not being responsible for her daughter's death and still showed no remorse. Dorothy Lewis did not attend. Alfonso Smalls, who was now 42, is reported to have since caused trouble while staying in prison throughout the years. As of 2019, he still asks to be released from prison as he claims he is rehabilitated, been a cook for 20 years in prison, and would plan on opening a restaurant if released. What he hasn't said was an I'm sorry or expressed any remorse for what he did to this day. His appeal to the judge was described to be less than impressive and has since been denied. Following the horrific event, Dorothy Lewis lived with her grandmother and then her brother. She struggled to ever leave the house alone. She tried attending a grief support group, but found that it made her even more depressed. She then became a first and third grade school teacher and at first taught at Eustis Heights Elementary School the same school seven-year-old Jamilia attended. She was introduced to a man named Hugh Brockington, who was supposed to be her counselor but soon became her husband 17 months after the attack, and she kept her surname Lewis to honor her daughters. Now remarried, they share a son together named Joshua Brockington, who enjoys martial arts and even featured as the young Warren G in the movie Straight Outta Compton. Dorothy Lewis and her husband have since founded a church where they both are co-pastors. She has since forgiven her attackers and speaks occasionally to groups of her story, but declines most interviews, including two extended by Oprah. She has told her own story in her book called Unbroken, The Dorothy Lewis Story. You can find her book for purchase in the link below.